Hello! In this tutorial on Schillinger Diatonic Symmetric Harmony, the focus is on the bass part. For this type of harmony in the Schillinger system, we use diatonic roots and a set of chord structures in thirds. These chord progressions are characterized by a diatonic bass part and altered notes in the upper harmony layer. However, in some cases also the bass part contains non-diatonic notes. In this video I will discuss the occurrence of such anomalies and how they affect the harmonic texture. Recently I started a video tutorial series on tension level control in chord progressions. The approach merges Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony with a Paul Hindemith chord dissonance classification scheme. The result is a modified diatonic symmetric harmony system, with more options for chord structure selection and a better tension curve control over the progression. The diatonic character is determined by the bass part, which in both the Schillinger and the Hindemith approach mostly consists of diatonic notes. However, some mechanisms yield chromatic alterations in the bass part. I will discuss the causes of a non-diatonic bass part, how to handle the alterations, and I will show chord progression examples. As an introduction, let's consider a diatonic four-part chord progression. Both the chord roots and structures are derived from a seven-pitch diatonic scale, here C major. The harmony uses chords in thirds. The root movement is based on a number of positive and negative root cycles. If you are not familiar with the diatonic root cycle concept, you may want to watch the tutorial on Schillinger nomenclature on this channel. In a four-part setting, one caudal function is doubled in the upper layer. Here it is the regular and frequent doubling of the root. The example has all chords in root position. The voice leading is smooth, mostly stepwise. The progression closes with a strong dominant tonic cadence. This is a familiar classical music idiom, a standard voice leading exercise in tonal harmony. The essential aspect of diatonic symmetric harmony is the independent selection of the chord structures for given roots. This episode uses triads and thirds only, for simplicity. That yields a set of four triad types, major, minor, augmented and diminished. In this progression, we maintain the root cycle series from the earlier diatonic example. However, and this is the essential element, we generate an independent chord structure series from the set of four triad types. The result contains non-diatonic altered notes in the upper layer over a diatonic bass. We again aim for smooth, mostly stepwise voice leading. The musical texture now has a different quality, with the major triads reminding of intermediate dominant chords. This is a textbook example in Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony. We stick to the definition with roots from a diatonic scale and pre-selected chord structures. But the chapter in the Schillinger book unfortunately displays inconsistency. Various mechanisms affect the diatonic bass part. We will look into these now. Chords may be written in inverted position. 
as is shown here for diatonic harmony. This progression is in the B Dorian minor mode, and all chords are in the first inversion position, written as sixth chords with the chordal function 3 in the bass. The example is based on positive root cycles only, and we use the regular doubling of 1 and 5 for inverted chords. Both layers are completely diatonic. Next, we construct a diatonic symmetric progression from the previous example, maintaining the diatonic bass line. We select a chord structure series shown above the staff. The consequence is that now we must use a number of non-diatonic chord roots, that is, chords built on altered scale degrees, as seen in measure 1 and 7. The altered notes in the upper layer are marked once again with red arrows. Note the voice leading of these non-diatonic notes. There is some irregular doubling of the third in order to achieve good voice leading. And, although this example violates the Schillinger definition, most figures in his original books use this approach in order to have a diatonic bass part. The exceptions we will see in a moment. Alternatively, we could adhere to the definition and use chord roots from the diatonic scale. For the given chord structure series now, however, this yields altered notes in the bass part, as shown here. There's only one example in the Schillinger book that shows this alternative approach, but without any discussion. That is one reason for making this tutorial. To show you the two alternatives and how they affect the bass. The second reason is that the occasional chromatic notes in the lower part is something we see a lot in the Hindemith book on harmony. Listen to this alternative setting and note the resolution direction of the altered pitches in upper layer and bass. Let's do another example, now in F Mixolydian major. Here's a diatonic harmony progression with chords in both root and first inversion position. The root cycle series has one negative R-3 at the start. The closing lacks cadential feeling. This is the voice leading, with one doubling of the third and a nasty forbidden exact parallel octave that I overlooked in the design of the example. Mea culpa. From the previous example we create the diatonic symmetric equivalent. We generate a chord structure series, where I now introduced high contrast augmented minor and augmented diminished triad pairs. In the first approach we keep the diatonic bass and use altered scale degrees as chord roots. In the voice leading note the marked altered notes and where they are going. You will see that now flattened notes are ascending and the reverse. There are augmented intervals 
and the overall smoothness is suffering. This unexpected motion in the parts is inevitable and is a characteristic of the diatonic symmetric harmony idiom. We return to the second approach with, in agreement with the definition, a set of diatonic chord roots. This yields two altered notes in the bass. These, and also the altered notes in the upper layer, may resolve in an unexpected, unnatural direction. You may want to control and improve the chromatic voice leading in the bass part. That will strengthen the diatonic flavor of this harmony type. The next mechanism that affects the lower part is the usage of passing chord groups. Schillinger discusses two standard formulas. The first of which is the passing sixth chord group. That has the inverted chord on a weak position in the bar. Passing chord groups deserve a separate tutorial, but this slide has an overview of a number of passing sixth chords. The group consists of two chords in root position surrounding the S6. It occurs in major and minor and for various root cycles. The bass part may ascend or descend. The second formula is the passing 6-4 chord group. Again, the group consists of three chords, with the outer element moving from root to first inversion position, or the reverse. This yields an ascending or descending bass part variant, with the second inversion triad in the center. Here are two examples in both major and minor. These types of passing chord groups may be plugged into any diatonic or diatonic symmetric chord progression. Let's recapitulate the two alternative bass part approaches. Here's a progression in C major with one negative root cycle and the mix of root and first inversion positions. The independent chord structure series has a nested repeating element, which yields a total of seven chords. Solution one has the diatonic bass part and chord roots on altered scale degrees. The upper layer special notes and voice leading are marked. In approach 2, we maintain the root cycle and the chord structure series, but we insert a passing 6th chord group in measure 2. For diatonic chord roots, we get the solution shown here. The minor triad type in measure 2 yields an A-flat in the bass. This example has been constructed in such a way that the altered notes resolve in the proper direction, strengthening the diatonic flavor of this chromatic setting.
Next, let's combine all previous phenomena in somewhat longer chord progressions. Progression 1 consists of 15 chords in E major, with positive root cycles dominating. We see chords in both root and first inversion position, and 5 passing chord groups have been inserted. These yield altered notes in the bass that all resolve in the right direction. Also check the resolution in the upper layer. Here we find some unexpected motion in the parts, as is typical for this harmony type. I might have improved the voice leading, but decided to leave the example as is. The next example is in a minor mode, with a nice mix of strong positive and destabilizing negative root cycles. There are more first inversion than root position chords, and we see two instances of each passing chord group. In this setting I aimed for the fully diatonic bass, and instead modified the chord roots. In the voice leading, I mark the resolution direction of the altered notes. Next, I demonstrate how this given chord progression may be used as the basis for a percussive synthesizer setting. As the music plays, you may read the annotations in the score. The final progression is in G Mixolydian mode, with a raised 4th scale degree, here the C sharp. In the root cycle series there is 1R0, in order to remind you that we may have a static chord root, while the chord type changes. Again, there is a mix of chord positions and the occurrence of passing chord groups. We combine the two alternative approaches, the diatonic bass and the diatonic chord roots. The bass part now has two altered notes, the raised 7th degree F sharp in measure 3 and the lowered 3rd degree B flat in measure 9. If the written B flat in measure 2 is read as the enharmonic equivalent A sharp, then all alterations resolve in the right direction. This progression has been turned into an ambient mood texture for lead guitar, rhythm section and string quartet.
In summary, we have been studying chord progressions in the Schillinger diatonic symmetric harmony type. This setting typically has a diatonic bass part and altered notes in the upper layer. Usage of chord inversions and passing chord groups will affect the diatonic character of the bass part. And it may now contain altered notes as well. I discussed the two alternative approaches. Either use diatonic chord roots in accordance with the definition or maintain a diatonic bass and use chord roots on altered scale degrees. Be aware of the voice leading of these altered notes. Either confirm the diatonic scale or keep the occasional unexpected motion in any part. Completing this tutorial enables us to later return to the subject of tension control in chord progressions, uniting Schillinger and Hindemith and provide you with another practical tool in your composer's toolbox. Please subscribe to this channel, contribute to its visibility by liking and sharing this tutorial. Go to my website for donations in support of my work and for finding more content. Thanks for watching.